Uh, may I give you a prayer request? Tomorrow is the day scheduled for John's surgery, my son John. Would you pray for him tonight? Uh, it is a double procedure. The surgeon is going to take out the diseased appendix. You'll remember the infection of several weeks ago where God marvelously answered prayer and then removed the gallbladder, which also has several large stones. Thank you for praying for my son, John. We're in the book of Proverbs, aren't we? We come to chapter 4 this evening, and uh, I'm amazed at some things I find here. Truly, every chapter of the Bible is like walking into a gold mine. All kinds of treasures. Some on the surface, some you probably got to dig a little to get. Something for the babes in Christ, something for the strong young men, something for the wise, elder brothers and sisters. All the marvels of the Word of God. Listen to verse 1. Hear ye children the instruction of a father. Let me tell you what's happening here. We are being given a private viewing of Solomon's daddy. These are the Proverbs of Solomon. Teaching his son, Solomon. David teaching Solomon about wisdom. Preacher, do you think David knew anything about wisdom? I do. I don't think God would have used him to write half the Psalms if he didn't. I don't think Acts 13 could have called David a man after God's own heart if he was not a man of wisdom. But, but preacher, he made a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes, and I'm not trying to uh, lighten the severity of David's sin, but he was forgiven. He sought and was forgiven of God, Psalm 51. David, here's a wise daddy teaching his son about wisdom. Some of y'all have got little children. Some of your grandparents have grandchildren. It behooves us. If we're going to do like David did to teach them the things of God, to teach them wisdom from our almighty heavenly Father. Listen, listen to David. I'm sorry, listen to Solomon. He, David's his daddy. I was my father's son. I'm in verse 3. I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Solomon's mother is Bathsheba. Here we have David and Bathsheba, after forgiveness had come, teaching their son wisdom, giving their son godly knowledge, sharing with Solomon understanding. No wonder when God said, name anything you would like, son, I'll give it to you. No wonder he wanted an understanding heart. He had been taught to treasure this thing called wisdom this is a true this is a true family altar situation this evening a daddy teaching his children about wisdom can i amplify that can i change it just a little bit i want my heavenly father tonight to teach me about wisdom to teach me his son and y'all his sons and daughters about wisdom listen to verse 5 Get wisdom, get understanding, and forget it not. Every little tidbit of wisdom you get, lay it aside, treasure it, forget it not. That proves wisdom can be forgotten. The verb there, forget it not, means don't let it wither. Don't let it, don't let it dry up, as it were, on the vine. It means to ignore. Don't you ignore the wisdom God places in your life and in your hand. Whether you got it from a godly daddy or a godly pastor or a godly Sunday school teacher, wherever you got it, do not, do not forget it. I'm like, That's worth going home with right there. Verse number seven. Get it now. Verse number seven. Wisdom is the principal thing 
Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Can I parse that a little bit? Wisdom is the... Let me give you a good working definition of wisdom. I don't think we've had this before. Seeing life from God's point of view. That's wisdom. Seeing life from God's point Not man's point of view. Uh, not some heretic's point of view. Not some reprobate's point From God's point of view. That's wisdom. Here's understanding. It's a similar def Responding to life from God's point of view. Acting on God's wisdom. Responding to life from God's point of view. Wisdom is the principal thing. And that word principle, it's a resheath, resheath. It's a Hebrew word. It means it's the chief thing. It is the begin. Uh, the first verse in Genesis, in the beginning, better is sheath, in the beginning. Wisdom is the beginning thing. You've got to begin building your Christian life on wisdom. Get it. I'm still in verse number seven. Use as a verb that means acquire it, possess it. Buy it if you have to. Get wisdom any way you can. Of course, we can get it through the Word of God. We can get it by prayer. We can get it by listening to godly preaching. And with all of thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom and understanding. These things are being drummed into these young folks' lives. You've got to have God's wisdom. You've got to have, and now I dare say nobody cares uh, uh, hardly anything about wisdom and understanding. It's money, it's prestige, it's physical pleasure. It's the chief thing you better get. Y'all, we have a golden opportunity in these next few weeks of spending an evening meditation in the great book of wisdom. You'd have to try not to get a few sentences of wisdom out of these chapters. If you'll listen, pay any attention at all, we better take advantage of that privilege. Oh, I, I, I love this line. It's in verse 8. Exalt wisdom and she will promote thee. Exalt wisdom and she will promote me. The verb uh, to exalt, S-A-L-A-L, -A -A Salal. The word Selah. I'm S-E-L-A-H and all the Psalms comes from it. Exalt, lift up wisdom. Talk about God's great wisdom. Beg God to put wisdom in your life. Exalt wisdom and wisdom will promote you. It is a PL verb. Uh, it is a PL imperfect. It will promote you again and again and again and again. And PL means forcefully. With all the might and all of the strength, it will lift you up. Room. It will, that's the Hebrew. It will lift you up. There again. Sure, I'm glad I studied this chapter. Sure, I'm glad I shared that. If you will exalt wisdom, it will promote you. It says this, and I'm just going right on. I'm in verse 8 now. Wisdom will bring you honor when you embrace her. When you embrace her. I want to learn how to embrace wisdom. Preacher, you're going to tell us about words there clasp fold into your arms it shows great worth it shows great intensity and great desire oh my daddy says to the boy my heavenly father says to me I, i'm in verse 11 i have taught thee the way of wisdom i want every preacher i want every sunday school teacher to get this verb i have taught thee the way of wisdom. Yara. Yara. It's a Hebrew verb. And this is what it means. To throw something. To toss it. To hurl it over that way. It pictures a godly daddy all day long around his son or his daughter just tossing out little bits of truth. Little half verses of wisdom. Little, little nouns and verbs that magnify the omniscience and the prudence and the understanding of God. That's the word teaching. 
It's not a class with a board and a 90-minute lecture all day long on the job training, tossing out little nuggets of truth. And then the daddy says, I have led thee in the right paths. All our kids are going to do is follow in our steps. I'm glad I got the Lord as my shepherd. I'm one of his sheep. I'm going to follow his steps. I have led thee. You reckon the Lord's led us in the right paths? I'm interested in that verb led. It means to go the same track again and again and again and again till you've packed the ground hard and then you've worn the grass off and then you've actually begun to cut a trench. Oh my, it means just to stay with it. It means to repeatedly remain steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Oh my, let's wear out the paths of righteousness. Let's don't go any of these new ways. Give me the old paths. Give me the old ways. And then it says of wisdom in verse 13, she is thy life. Oh, preacher, I, I want about 10 minutes of wisdom instruction every evening. Could I get a little bit of that? It won't work. Well, I, what I'm going to do, I'm, I, I try to read 12 books a year, and one of them I'm going to read about wisdom, and that's good enough. God will have to be happy. It won't work. She is thy life. You've got to make wisdom that important. You gotta make it your obsession. You gotta make it a you gotta make it a years and years and years long commitment. You gotta have wisdom, seeing life like God sees it. You gotta have understanding, responding to life. Uh, uh, gotta have, uh, and remember the grammatical chakma, the grammatical definition, Hebrew of wisdom, skilled, skilled at living right, skilled at godly living. And then basically the rest of the chapter, let me tell you, it says this is the way wicked men act and this is the way godly men act. And you're going to have to make a decision. And wisdom is saying you've got to spurn the wicked men and you've got to walk in the paths of the righteous man. Let me, let me try to explain it. I'm in verse 14. Enter not into the path of the wicked. The word that is used there for wicked means the kind that getting worse and worse every day. It is active wickedness. It is malignant wickedness. It is ever worsening wickedness. It is unashamed wickedness, flaunting it in the face of an. Don't go with that crowd. Don't walk in the way of evil men. If I had time, avoid it. Pass it by. I want God's wisdom because it'll tell me how God views wickedness and then understanding will kick in and tell me to stay away. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Touch not the unclean thing. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. But, that's the wicked, that's the un... But, the path of the just. That word path we use it in our newsletter every month. It's virtually the word itinerary. Everywhere the just man goes, the path of the just is as a shining light. The wicked deliberately walk in darkness. Some men love darkness rather than light. But the just man, the saved man, anybody saved, anybody blood -wise? the path of the just is as a shining light. Hallelujah. I'm walk if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And that shining light shines more and more until the perfect day. Oh, what a promise. The wisdom I get today, if I live by it next week, it'll get brighter and brighter and brighter. The verses I memorized, the text that I preached this week, if I'll revisit them a week or two or a month from now, they'll get fuller and fuller and fuller. That's the way it is with God as we say, He gets, could I get an amen, sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. Heaven gets nearer and nearer and nearer. And the Word of God gets clearer and clearer and clearer. Hallelujah. The path of the justice is a shining light. It is shining pretty bright the day I got saved, but it is a luminary. It is brighter today than it's ever, ever, ever been before. But the way of the wicked 
the way of the wicked. Verse 19. It's darkness. They don't even know they're falling. They know not at what they stumble. And then verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Uh, and, and it goes on to say, for out of it are the issues of life. But I think I'm just going to deal with that first clause. It's got some wisdom in it. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Guard it. Protect it. Oversee it. Keep thy heart. L-E-B. Lieb. It is a, your innermost being. Your conscience. Your thoughts. Your desires, your aspirations, your will. Keep your heart with all diligence. Don't you let the devil introduce a vile thought in your mind, in your heart. Don't you let this world introduce a bunch of lust and wickedness and ungodliness to, to, to your uh, way of living and, and, and manner of life. Keep your heart, protect your heart with all the, the word diligence. I looked it up. It is a word that means inner prison. Inner prison. That's where nobody gets. That, that inner prison, that's in there. That's maximum security. Keep your heart clean. Keep your heart pure. Keep it like an inner prison, like a maximum security institute. Don't you let sin in there. Don't you let the devil in there. Don't you let anything in there that will detract from the glory of God. Because out of that heart flows every other area. Every other area of life. I think we've come to the last verse, 27. i still got something I want to do, so don't cut me off yet. If you're going to live for God, wisdom will teach you this. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. You know how a lot of us live our lives, and watch the end of my finger, zigzag. A lot of us are up and down and up and down and on and off and on and off and hot and cold and hot and cold. Don't look to the right hand or to the left. I'm going to need an amen. Stay on the straight and narrow path. Don't be weary in well-doing. Stick with it, for in due season you will reap if you faint not. And then it says, remove thy foot from evil. That's that detour verb. Here's evil, the point of my finger. Step around it. Detour. I used it yesterday. Circumnavigate it. Don't get caught in the clutches. Remove your foot from evil. Paul would put it, abstain from the very appearance. Abstain from the very appearance of evil. Preacher, what have we talked about? Proverbs 4. Yep, yep, but I mean, preacher, specific. a number of nuggets and the Holy Ghost, if you took notes especially, will have to bring it back to mind. But I tell you what God's trying to do. He's using wisdom. He's trying to infuse in us understanding so that we'll be able to comprehend, I need an amen, the wicked days in which we're living. Our society is crumbling. If the path of the just gets brighter and brighter, and it does, path of the wicked is getting darker and darker. There's a verse in First Chronicles, it's in chapter 12, talks about a group of Jews called the men of Issachar. That's just one of the tribes. It said they had understanding of the times. These Proverbs chapters will give us understanding of the times. How to better read what's going on. So far, I'm reading Jesus is coming again. God, give us understanding. Give us understanding of the times. In my last couple of minutes, if I can, I want to read that last paragraph again with a certain emphasis. Listen up. I'm starting at verse 20. You're welcome to follow. My son... Attend to my words. Let incline thine ear. Means that cup your ear. Or prick your ear like the deer does out in the forest. Don't miss this, son. And when it comes to the words of wisdom, don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Watch that. Eyes, 
harp for their life unto you. Their life unto you. And they'll be health to your flesh. Now my whole body. Eyes, heart, flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Put away from thee your forward mouth. Don't let perverse lips, lying lips, be a part of your life. Let your eyes look right on and your eyelids straight ahead. Don't lust. Don't look at filth and garbage. Ponder the path of thy feet, plural, of thy feet. Let all thy ways be established. Don't turn to the right hand and remove your foot, singular, from evil. Did y'all hear those body parts? Let me see if I can put them together. You listen, and I'll give them to you. Eyes, heart, whole body, flesh, mouth, lips, eyes again, eyelids, even more specifically, feet in the plural, right hand, and now foot in the singular. Keep your foot. From a, all those body parts involved in me learning wisdom, yep, involved in me practicing wisdom, yeah, wisdom and understanding, seeing life from God's point of view, eyes and eyelids, responding to life, my feet, my hands, my body, my flesh, so from God's point of view. Wow, what a way, and little children, oh, how tactile they are, uh, uh, hands and feet and eyes, and oh, it means some, got the ears in there too, hear what I'm saying. Reminds me of Paul. I've got to get off the air here. Reminds me of Paul in Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. And this is just your reasonable service. Present your bodies. My whole body, their whole flesh. My eyes, my ears, my lips, even my eyelids and my hands and my feet and my leg present your bodies a living sacrifice unto God. Isaiah chapter 1, he told the Jews in a backslidden state, he said, you are one putrid sore from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Reverse that. A growing child of God, a spirit-filled child of God, a gaining wisdom, and that's what we're trying to do in Proverbs, is a, a growing in wisdom child of God. Every part of his body, every part of her being dedicated to learning wisdom and practicing the wisdom that has been learned. God willing, tomorrow evening, Proverbs chapter 5. It is interesting to say the least. Every night, a new episode. God teaching us. And he is the all-wise God. His ways. Always higher than our ways. Again, pray for my son, John, if you would. I'd be so grateful to you. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the fact that we can learn about wisdom. God, help us to give it our all, from our eyes to our heart, to our flesh, to our mouth, to our lips, even to our eyelids, to our feet, plural, our right hand, and our foot, singular, our whole bodies dedicated under the granite in Jesus' name. Amen.